do you often feel that you are not good enough, not worthy? Do you feel that this keeps you stuck from getting success, from fulfilling your goals and thriving in this world? If you answered yes to one of these questions, then most probably you are carrying shame. In this episode, I will explain what shame is and give you nine essential fundamental tips to shift and to ditch shame forever so you can embody empowerment and thrive. My name is Nuna Isima and I help women transform trauma and turn pain into power, purpose, and even pleasure. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell so you can be notified of my new episodes. I post weekly on subjects and topics that can move your needle in your journey of evolution, in your empowerment, and in your transformation. So what is shame? Shame is very different to guilt. Guilt means I have done something bad and therefore my behavior is bad. So if I change my behavior, then guilt might dissipate. It is not so worth shame. Shame is the fundamental feeling that I am bad. My being is bad. Something that is so essential and fundamental that no matter what I do, I cannot actually change it, right? That's the limiting belief that shame has the frequency to carry. So how to get rid of shame? So first of all, accept shame as a survival mechanism right? It was there to help you survive a certain event in your life or um, a certain challenge that was difficult for you to overcome. So let's welcome shame as a friend that was there to protect us. But now that you don't need that shame anymore and that shame keeps you stuck, this is a good time to take the journey to release it. And in the journey itself, that's when you grow. That's when your spirit evolves. That's when you expand. And that's when you metamorph into the higher, better being of who you really are. So let's get into the tips. Tip number one, set an intention. Intention is a powerful electromagnetic force that has, it's like an arrow that, that moves into one direction. And when you set your intention in a very clear way and decide, I am dropping shame, shame does not serve me anymore and I'm ready to let it go, this on its own has a lot of power to move a lot of energy in the right direction. So this is the tip number one, set that very clear intention. Tip number two, be vulnerable. So there is a lot of uh, misconception that being vulnerable is a weakness. But actually being vulnerable is a strength because we all have flaws, right? As human beings, we all have flaws. None of us is perfect. We are imperfect imperfection, walking this spiritual path in a human body. We have ups and downs, we have weaknesses and shadows and strength and beauties. We, el we have all of that. This is all part of the makeup that makes our human existence. 
And by being transparent with your flaws, you actually make more connection. You actually, uh, you, you break the ice of um, that illusionary mask of perfection that so many people are wearing to the outside world because of the fear of this connection. Now, shame is the fear of this connection. It is the fear that if we are going to be vulnerable and transparent of who we really are, we're not going to be lovable. People will not like us. And of course, as human beings, we are wired to be loved. We, we long to be loved. We, want, we long to be accepted. And we long to feel that connection. So by being vulnerable, by sharing your um, more sensitive, um, real state of being, you actually create more intimacy and therefore more connection. Tip number three, be authentic. Now, being authentic means that you are your unique expression of the divine. However you came here in whatever shape or form or color, you are you. And the truth is that you will attract some people and you will repel some other people. And that's okay because not everyone will love you. People are looking at other people through their own filters. They have their own lenses through which they categorize people, they, um, they, they place them into certain boxes, and they do it from their own personal experience. So just to simplify, giving you an example, if you have a, had a friend or, you know, um, when you were younger, and that friend's name was John, then all the Johns in the world that you meet later on, you assume carrying the same qualities. And same apply for the opposite. If you had somebody that told you something very mean and that person had to simplify the example, black hair and glasses and, uh, and um, maybe an earring in the ear, then all those people that you meet later on in life that have the same qualities will unconsciously remind you that this person might be mean and therefore I must be careful, right? So this is very simplified examples, but nevertheless, that's how the human mind works. So you cannot fit into everyone's best lenses and nor do you want to. You just have to be exactly who you are and, and, and you will be loved by the right people for who you are. And those that can't see that, bless them. That's okay. Let them go. There is enough people on this planet that will love you exactly as you are. So being authentic is in the way you express yourself, in the way you dress, in the way you speak, in the way you act and live your values, in the way you speak your own truth. This is all part of you and your unique manifestation. And so live up to it because you are here to be you, right? And tip number three, this is your responsibility to be emotional intelligent. Now, let me give you a, a little bit uh, of understanding about that. Whatever happened to you is not your fault, but how you reacted, how you behave, how you interrupted, this is your responsibility. So the emotional human spectrum consists of all the emotions that you could possibly think of. And the so-called negative emotions are also part of the human experience. We cannot avoid them. They are part of our existence, of our journey as human beings. So we're all going to feel uh, heartbreak, sadness, grief. This is just part of what life 
teaches us. And through those experiences, we grow and expand, right? These are great teachings. So first, it's about feeling all the feelings that maybe you have suppressed or maybe you have identified as bad ones or you rejected or you didn't want to feel. Let them be felt. Let them be accepted for what they are because reality is that with the depth of the sadness and the heartbreak there is also the heights of the joy and the ecstasy they interwoven with each other and they go hand in hand together but now what happens is that you've got two spirals of emotions and the one is going up with the high frequency energies and um, all the, the so-called good, there is no good or bad really, but they are positive and negative in terms of charge. So the positive energies, which are um, joy, happiness, excitement, um, all those, they are the spiral that goes up. And right at the top of that spiral, the highest frequency of emotions are gratitude and love yeah these are the emotions that have the most positive charge and um, and 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 going downward in that spiral yeah in the negative charged emotions you have all the emotions that are um you know anger and rage and sadness and um, jealousy and the resentment and all those emotions are in that spiral that going down and at the bottom of that spiral guess what lies you guessed it right shame shame is one of the lowest frequencies and emotions on the human spectrum now this is again not a bad thing it just is you want to process your emotions, you want to, you want to climb up or, or rather spiral up in that spiral to create more positive emotions in your life because simply they feel good. They nourish you, they charge you with positive charge. Now, how do you create that um, momentum to rise in this spiral of the positive emotions? You consciously bring in into your life more of those um, events or uh, or uh, things that will bring you those emotions right so you consciously cultivate more positive emotions in your life more joy more excitement more um, happiness you simply do what brings you pleasure so pleasure becomes your compass and when you do more activities and engage in in more uh, qualities that bring you those emotions what happens is that takes you on that spiral it it rises you up and it has the power to overcome the negative emotions so the one way to ditch shame and to dissipate its um, grip on you is to cultivate more of those positive emotions so simply said do what brings you real pleasure not as an escape not um to say uh, okay i'll drink lots of alcohol because that brings me pleasure because that's just a very um the uh, what's the word uh, it's it's a deception it's not real pleasure it's not really fulfilling your soul it's more of a way to escape and gives you it gives you a momentary a uh, sense of release or um, numbness or you know i'm not talking about that kind of pleasure i'm talking about real pleasure I'm talking about um, the pleasure that comes from dancing or from doing some physical activity or swimming or having a, a massage or even your hair done or your nails or drinking coffee with a friend or all those things. The list is endless of what brings you pleasure. Do more of that, right? Tip number four. 
is improve your inner dialogue. Now, this is crucial and very important and at times very overlooked, right? You constantly talk to yourself. Now, sometimes it goes into the subconscious and you're not even aware you do it. But when you bring it to the consciousness, what are you saying to yourself? Are you on cheerleader? Are you uplifting yourself? Are you kind and loving? Or are you pushing yourself down, criticizing, judging, and being harsh on yourself. Now, many times your inner dialogue, your inner voice has to do with what you've been programmed with. So at times it can be your mother's voice, your father's voice, your teachers, your community, your media, whatever the case may be, it might not be your own voice. It is very, very crucial to change that inner dialogue to be positive, to be loving and kind. Now, this is a process. It's not one day work. And I've got some um, episodes on that. So I will put it in the description below. And you can follow um, my work on how to do it. I'm not going to get into it right now. But just bring more awareness into your inner dialogue and, and ask yourself the question, if you were your best friend, if you were talking to your best friend as you talk to yourself, would you still be your best friend? And if the answer is no, then you have to change your inner dialogue to be supportive, to be inspiring, to be uplifting. And it's possible to do. So follow my work on how to do it, right? Um, and I've also created amazing self affirmations that you can download. And this is uh, my free gift to you that you can print and they, they are beautifully designed by an artist. They are black and white, so you can leave them as they are. They just gorgeous as they are. Or you can even get creative and paint them with colors. Um, I did it with my daughters and uh, we hang it all over. And it's really a, a great reminder. And, you know, when you affirm something and you affirm it again and again, you start believing it. It starts to get wired in your uh, consciousness, in your brain. So you really want to rewire your brain for a positive affirmations that will uplift you so you can download it in the link below and you can print as many copies as you want you can hang it in your children's room if you have and just keep affirming to yourself those positive affirmations tip number five move your body now you, I don't need to tell you how moving your body is really amazing for your overall health, right? You probably know that. You probably have heard about that. But there's also another benefit of moving your body, and that is that you actually let stagnant emotions to be released. All those pent-up emotions that you haven't felt fully, that you have suppressed, that you have kind of encapsulated in your body as frozen emotions because they were either too overwhelming or you didn't know how to process them, you weren't ready at that time, or you just didn't do it. And they are living in the cells of your body. But not only that, they actually require your vital energy to keep them there at bay. They are consuming your life force energy to be encapsulated in your body. And they actually looking for release. They are knocking on your inner doors. And you probably know that because they come in your dreams. They come in your thoughts. They come in your feelings of stuckness, right? You sometimes don't know exactly to pinpoint what it is, but you just know that there's something that keeps you stuck. And that can be those suppressed emotions. They create this ease, they create illness, um, they create disharmony. So by moving your body, 
you actually shake them out and you let them go. And sometimes they come to the surface to be felt. So you might move your body and all of a sudden you feel a sense of grief, right? And you think, well, what am I grieving on right now? And it might be an old grief that hasn't been, been fully felt or fully processed. So this is an opportunity to bring those feelings to the surface, to meet them from where you are at now, right? And, and I just want to say, don't be afraid to meet those feelings because, you know, they're not going to be as harsh as they were in the time that you suppress them because you were younger, you had less tools, you, hasn't, you haven't had the wisdom that you have now to deal with it. So moving your body not only creates those uh, feelings of uh, euphoria because it releases all those yummy, juicy endorphins and oxytocin and all those amazing substances that makes you feel great, but they also um, really help you to move your emotional state and, and cleanse your body from that movement within. And so my favorite form of movement is dancing, and the yoga, as a yoga teacher, I know the benefits of yoga, but really any other movement that you enjoy will do. So there is no right or wrong, just move your body. And tip number six is connect to nature. Now, nature is what you are. You are nature, right? You are made from the earth you've got to share the same elements that the earth is 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 got you you share the waters you 60 70 80 percent water um you are made of the elements you have the fire burning through your passions through your digestion keeping your temperature you have uh, the air that keeps you alive right without uh, breathing you know more here. So the, the air is a lot more than oxygen. It's really uh, consists of prana, of chi, of the universal intelligence. And so by, by spending time in nature, you feel in more connection, more connection to, the, to all that is and more connection to yourself. And uh, as I said before, connection is the antidote to shame. So if you feel more connection, shame dissipates, right? So spend more time in nature, indulge yourself in nature. And that brings me into the next two tips that has to do with nature. And um, one of them is using the medicine of water because the water is cleansing. So this includes the inner waters and the outer waters. The inner waters are your tears, your sweat, and also your sexual fluids, right? That is your inner waters. And when you let them flow with ease, you cleanse yourself from the inside. And to cleanse yourself from the outside is to immerse yourself in the waters of Mother Earth. So, you know, her magnificent oceans, rivers, lakes, waterfalls, um, all of that. I recently been enjoying um, cold immersions in the Atlantic Ocean here in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. And it took me, it took me years to, to gain the courage to get into these freezing waters. And, uh, and I did it in baby steps. So initially I was just dipping a little bit and out. And now I spend about 20 minutes in the cold waters. And I can tell you that this is absolutely mind blowing. I feel so alive after coming out of the water. I feel rejuvenated. I feel um, high. I feel natural high. I feel that my body vibrates for hours after that cold immersion. So this is one way that you can really uplift your being in such a, a, a non-cost, um, easy, simple way that is available for you. And the other 
tip is, of course, has to do with the breath, because breath is life, breath is spirit. So bringing more consciousness into your breath, um, taking a deep breath, right? If you just, for a second now, take one or, or three uh, deep breath into your womb, into your um, whole body, you, you just feel that instant drop into your body. You feel that instant expansion and relaxation and embodiment. All those things that really bring you back home and bring you back into the connection with yourself. So bringing more consciousness into your breath. I'm not going to get um, into breath work, which is one of my most favorite um, ways of healing and transformation as a breath work facilitator. Um, so if you're interested about more uh, information about breath work, uh, check on my other episodes on breath work and, um, and yeah, I will leave a link uh, below to, to learn more. Uh, but breathwork, uh, it's really one tool that I found during my over two decades of healing work that is an instant way of transforming in quantum leaps. So um, check it out. It's really phenomenal. And... Um, and the last, uh, the last tip that I have for you today is forgive yourself. Now, this is a big one. We really cannot forgive anyone else before we fully forgive ourselves. For whatever, we have to forgive ourselves, whether we feel that we did a mistake or didn't do the right um, decisions or choices or if we hurt anyone or whatever in our past that we feel that we carry some guilt or shame around, forgive yourself. So cultivate that inner compassion, cultivate that loving kindness towards yourself, knowing that you are a human being. You only did the best you could with what you had at the time. And when you know better, you do better. And you are all good in your essence. You are because we are. We are the spark of the divine. And you are here to do mistakes. And you are here to learn from them and to grow. So bringing that um, compassion to your journey and to your being is very, very important. And um, I like to practice the oponopono. Um, way of um, of forgiving and healing and it's very simple it's four statements that you can repeat and you can change the order of them and it's powerful and transformative and it goes like that I am sorry please forgive me I thank you I love you I am sorry please forgive me I thank you I love you I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I thank you. So practicing that a couple times a day, when you go, when you drift off to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, just saying those sentences will have a major effect of your, on your life. So this is all for this episode. Um, download below my affirmations. And uh, don't forget to um, follow. And uh, I would like to hear from you. So please, if you can write in the comments, what was your biggest takeaway from this episode? And um, until the next time we meet, lots of love for me. Have an awesome day. This call is a wrap.